friends. Today we're talking about stopping new clutter. Stopping new clutter. I call it clutter stopping. And really, it's to keep clutter from building back up. It's the everyday things that we've already decluttered. We know where they belong and they're just lying around because we either have a horrible habit of allowing that to happen or our mind isn't right about it and we think, oh, I'm in a hurry, I have to just leave it here or our family isn't trained. There's lots of reasons for everyday clutter. It's the kind of clutter we need to pick up, not pass up. But my husband, Larry, came up with a great thing by accident the other day. As you may know, uh, when you have clutter in your house and you can't get to it, my saying is, I see you and I have a plan for you. Well, when we're doing clutter stops, where we're picking up the everyday clutter, the small little things that already have been identified and we know where they're going to stay, Larry, thinking he was saying, I see you and have a plan for you, said, I see you and I have a place for you. And it was brilliant. I see you and have a place for you. So we pick up a pair, my glasses are laying here on the table. When I pick up these glasses, I can say, I see you and I have a place for you and you belong in this case. And this case belongs in my purse. And that's the way it goes. So I have other things on here. I have, I have some things for a demonstration. I have a, televo a television remote. Where does it go? I see you and I have a place for you. And actually your place is right here, right here on the table. I have a water cup, whatever you call this. I see you, I have a place for you. It's actually on the table during the day and in the refrigerator, cleaned and refilled at night. That's what happens. So I've got things that I know where they go. It's not like they're really clutter because clutter means you haven't gone through it yet. Real clutter, clutter that won't move. Clutter that's clutter that overwhelms is generally things that you need to go through and decide what is trash, what is giveaway, and what is keep. And when you decide this, you have to decide it with an attitude of, you know what, if I accidentally make the wrong decision, it'll be okay. There is no wrong decision. There is no perfect. Okay, so we're not talking about that kind of clutter today though. We're talking about decluttering your areas where you have just put this daily clutter, just daily clutter. The children come home with things from school. Are you homeschool and you've got a lot of things they created or your husband drops his keys and his change somewhere or you put your purse in the, in the, in the dog's leash and the, the mail somewhere that doesn't belong. So when you see it, I see you and have a place for you are the key words that you're going to use. So do you have clutter in your home? I dare say you do. Most of us have clutter and most of us make a little nest around us when we sit down. So I always have a nest. I've got markers, you know, the, the erasable pens. I've got my planner. I've got uh, my business planner behind me. I've got a spiral bound notebook. I always keep this here for planning different things other than what goes in my book. A lot of times it's helping my mentees. So there's my business planner. Oh no, this is this is something else. This is uh, the Food Nanny Rescues Dinner, an excellent planning book for when you need to plan meals. I highly recommend this. If you don't want to buy it, go to the library and check it out if you can. If you're having trouble planning meals, this is the one I suggest. So I have these things around me because I need them. I work with them. But there is something here that I don't need around me. I'll show you. Actually, it's been sitting here for a day, and I thought I would look at it, and I didn't. So guess what I have to do today? This is a, a map of Natchez Trace. It's a, it's, a, it's a National Park Service's road that runs, it's a parkway that runs from Natchez, um, Mississippi, through Alabama, and all the way up to uh, Nashville, Tennessee. It's beautiful. It's only five miles from the property that I'm buying in Waterloo, Alabama, and it has Doug, uh, it has um, where Meriwether Lewis is buried. Is that his name, Meriwether Lewis? Yeah, Meriwether Lewis of Lewis and Clark. He has he has a burial site there and just different things. So it's pretty exciting. It's full of lots of history, but I'm not going to look at it today. I've been busy working, so I'm going to put it in a basket right here by the table, which is where I always put those things that are going to stay there for about a week or two, and then if nothing happens, I'll have to throw it away and get a new one when the time comes, because they have them all over the trace. 
So I know I digress, but it's important for me to let you know that everyone has clutter. Everyone has clutter. So we just have to stop the clutter. That's why I call it a clutter stop. I don't call it a, um, what does she call it? I don't call it a, um, a hot spot fire drill. I don't call it that because I don't want this to be a hot spot. It's your place where you where you use it. It can be nice. It can look nice. It doesn't look have to look hot. Hot is a bad connotation, like a hot mess. It doesn't have to be that way. You can certainly build a little mess there, and at the end of the day, put everything away. A hot spot is a place where everything just piles up and it gets out of control, and that's not what you want. And a fire drill seems such an emergency. I want this to be a calm, peaceful thing that we're doing. We're cleaning up calmly, peacefully, picking it up. I have a client today who came home from a couple of days off from her home. She came home and it felt a little out of control. Her husband and children had stayed home and she went off with her sister-in-laws and had a wonderful time. But there were some messes around and I said, well, you didn't make those messes, but you're still the mom, so you're in charge, but you don't have to pick them up. You don't have to pick them up. You have to say to your children, hello, <laughs> I see these things and I know there are places for them and you know where the places are. And so my suggestion was for her, and might be for you as well, to give each child a laundry basket, have them go through the house with your supervision, and put in all the things they left laying around so they can see the weight of what they've done. And then take it to their room or wherever it goes, and you oversee them putting them away. You don't physically put them away. When you have clutter that's daily clutter, and it's not you making that clutter, it's helpful, especially if it's children. Husbands, not so much, but if it's children, you help them put them where they go by overseeing. You don't touch them. You don't put them up for them, unless they're babies, of course. But you put the, you oversee it. It's like they create a memory muscle, a muscle memory of putting it up, putting it up, putting it up. And when you leave the next time to go on something like that, you can say, now, listen, I'm going out of town for business or whatever it is. The last time I left, recall that we had to pick up a whole bunch of stuff when I came home. I hope that's not the case when I come home this time. And every night when I talk to you on the phone, I'm going to remind you to pick it up and put it away so that when I come home, we don't have to go through this because it's much harder to put away three days of things than it is one day of things. And when you're home, especially at at-home homemaker with children at home, you can do it three times a day. And a payroll homemaker can do it three times a day. In the morning before you go to work, clutter stop. Right after uh, you get home from work, clutter stop. Right before the kids go to bed, clutter stops. Some of the clutter stops will be fruitless. There won't be anything to clutter stop, but it's still worth looking. Some of them will be very fruitful, <laughs> depending on the time of the day and the last time you did a clutter stop and the nature of your children. So, clutter stopping means stopping it in its tracks, keeping it from continuing. It also helps when you have decluttered an area. As you know, when we declutter, we declutter for 15 minutes in four segments a week. So this week we're doing three segments in the main living area when I'm recording this and one segment in the entryway because the first of the month falls on a Friday. So that's a new, that's zone one, the entryway. So to keep these rooms tidy or at least as good as they are when you leave them then at the end of the decluttering sessions, you need to do clutter stops in these rooms so that when you come back, you're not losing, you haven't lost ground. You just keep going from where you were before. So clutter stops are very, very important. Um, so if you can think of, think right now, think of the most cluttery place in your house that could be cleaned up every day. Now, I know that we are all in different stages of the system. You know, I teach an edited version of the Fly Lady system. So I know we're all in different phases. Some of you are brand new, you're overwhelmed, you have things coming out of your ears, and you think you will never ever get your house decluttered, but you will. So don't think that way. Stop thinking that way. All right? Um, some of you have decluttered and you're down to no clutter and you're just doing deep cleans, but you still have to do clutter stops because if you don't, guess what? It'll be cluttered before you know it. It will be cluttered. If any of you have invested to have somebody come in and declutter your home for you and it's been a while you'll notice that you've gotten it just as cluttered as it was before because you didn't learn anything you can't learn by not doing you learn by doing just like the children have the muscle memory of doing something you are the same way so someone can't say to you you know what i'm going to teach you how to swim and sit in a chair 
and teach you how to swim with you sitting in a chair and telling you how to swim. Here's how you hold your breath. Uh, and then you take your arm and you bring it over and you keep it close to your ear and you flutter kick and you all the things that we do in a, a, in a swimming stroke. That has to be practiced in little bits over and over until finally you're ready to put all the parts together and you can go across the pool and finally down the length of the pool and super finally several lengths of the pool doing the new stroke that you've learned. So it's the same way in your house. You're gonna have to keep practicing. Your children have to practice. You have to learn it yourself. And always remember that you are, as the woman, you are the nurturer of the family, you are the only mom of the family, and you're really the only homemaker in the family. You may have a very helpful husband, but you still are the homemaker. It's your, it's your main purpose. It's not your husband's main purpose. Okay, whether you work outside the home or not, you'll notice that he'll help you, but the default is to you. I know that because I worked for 40 years outside the home. The default was to me. My husband's very helpful, but honestly, it's the default to me, okay? Just like they have certain areas that they like to take care of. My husband enjoyed doing the garage. He loved doing the edging of the grass and the blowing and taking care of the oil and the, all that stuff in the car. That was his thing. My thing was the carpets, the mirrors, you know, things like that. Okay, all right, that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope that you um, realize the importance of clutter stops and that you say to your clutter, I see you and I have a place for you and easily put it in its place. Have a wonderful day and always remember that you are beautiful. So be beautiful.